man, I cannot tell you how much I absolutely love the new intro. It's like, amazing. I mean, just <laughs> Garnet's face in the beginning. <laughs> that just, and she's so smiling. Honestly, I had to do a double take when it first started because I was like, wait, are, whoa, 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 hold up. And then there's that part with the uh, tribute to Pokemon with the three. <laughs> oh, yeah, where, where they're all using the weapons. And most importantly, and Steven, Steven too, is using his shield. He's actually gotten a lot better at using it. Um, yeah. Like we've seen in the Steven bomb, he used it in Sword of the Sword multiple times. And he used it in um, keeping it together when fighting the clusters. Right, and, and, and he didn't have to worry about it, it just, it just popped up, and he was able to bring it, and he was able to, like, let it go. Yeah. Right. And mean, his bubbles, too. He's right. gotten, you know, yeah. better with those as well. One of um, the things that we poor, can see is... Poor, uh, Steven with the hollow pearls. <laughs> oh, yeah. Last time he used his shield, aside from the Steven bomb, um... He got, he got pretty hammered, um, and so that took a lot of energy out of him. He collapsed. I don't remember what exactly happened in the Uncle Grandpa episode. I know it was focused yeah, on Yeah, I thought history. we were never going to speak of the Uncle Grandpa episode again. <laughs> Cut. Cut. <laughs> All right. Hey, so uh, a couple of things uh, before we get into our discussion video all the way into it. Um, First of all, I'd like to thank our twos of visitors, our twos of watchers who have uh, faithfully watched both of our reaction videos. Um, I have three more of those. Thank you. Yay! I have three more of those in the can. Uh, right now, what I'm trying to do is figure out how to get the Steven Universe episodes and embed them in the reaction video so that you can see the Steven, uh, Steven episode as we react to it instead of just seeing three people sitting on the couch and laughing. Um, hopefully, that will happen sometime this weekend, and uh, by early next week, you will have uh, reaction to the third episode uh, where we are reacting to the third episode and the episode is actually in our episode of reaction. Uh, the second thing is that I have come up with a great idea for our intros and our outros. Famous uh, trios. Famous trios. I have come up with a great idea. Not you. I have come up You're with a great idea. You're taking a long time to say it, okay? okay. Famous <laughs> trios. So if I said I was Porthos, you would be... Uh, Athos? Athos and uh, Aramis. Aramis. Uh, that Aramis. would be the Three Musketeers for you children out there who have never <laughs> seen it. Um, if I said I was Mike, you would be uh, Lou. And I'd be Og. All right. And so um, I think for we got the idea. It's a great idea. We'll just do like and then we say we're on the island and we're watching Steven Universe or something yeah. like that. But I think uh, really for this one, we have to go back to the classic uh, uh, animated. Classic animated, not classic, classic. Because if we went classic, classic, we'd be like the Three Stooges or or, or the Three Wise Men. <laughs> I've got gold. <laughs> I've got frankincense. I don't even know. It's myrrh. It's myrrh. Mer okay. And I've got myrrh. <laughs> Apparently you don't. <laughs> and, we're, and we're in the manger. Watching and we're in the manger. manger. We're, not gonna, we're not going to go that far back. Um, let's start with uh, my one of my favorite classic cartoons. I guess classic at this point. I'm Yakko. I'm Wacko. And I'm Don. And you're watching the Animaniacs okay, talk about Steven Universe. Okay, we can't both do the finger thing. One of us has to <laughs> do the finger thing. Not both of It's in the first episode. You saw me snap and point and everything. I've been and... doing the finger thing. Let... Okay, I'm not saying stop, the finger thing. Stop, stop, okay? I do not want to know <laughs> that you... That either one of you is doing the finger thing. Okay, so let's go right uh, in. Like, like, that, like the giant uh, hand la, 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 Okay, so let's go right into our discussion about things that we learned from the last five episodes of Steven Universe. And I'm going to start because I think this is the most important thing. I think this is the thing that caught us most by surprise. And that was the incredibly large percentage of time that Steven spends doing laundry. Ding, ding, ding. This is where you insert a little thing. Steven doing laundry. So we'll have a little word box for every time. Okay. He does do a lot, I, though. He does do a lot of laundry. It's like three or four scenes in the past five episodes? Or five episodes, there are at least four or five scenes where he's... Well, I guess we shouldn't be really surprised since the laundry, the, the washer and dryer are featured prominently Probably. in every single episode. Hmm. I'm, I'm surprised. I think it's honestly <laughs> foreshadowing? Foreshadowing. a bonding exercise, though, because we've seen how fast Garnet can move. That sapphire, I personally believe. Right. Um, 
we I would assume that the you know blocking meat mania all of that should be able to fold laundry quicker than she does. So I think it's yeah. I think it's a gem bonding exercise gem more bonding. than anything. All right. I mean, um, also the fact that, you know, there's a warp pad to it, and there's really <laughs> no plugs or anything, so Garnet has to go up there and power it every time they want to By use magic. It. By magic. By magic. Right. But, um, well, another thing we learned about Stephen is that he is a very gracious host. True. Uh, that is documented. Document. We have it with on subtitles. <laughs> with subtitles. It's part of a documentary. <laughs> Ronaldo. Hey, if Ronaldo said it, it must be true. Key Beach City Weird. <laughs> well, speaking of Ronaldo and his documentaries, <laughs> as we have seen with his uh, vast array of technological special effects and film. Feature just high quality, um, his, you know, scenes and everything. His editing is almost as good as ours. Yeah, <laughs> I I can think we uh, we can safely say that he must be part of the special effects crew for Danger Five. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for those of you who haven't watched Danger Five, it's the worst show ever made, and it's hilarious. You should check it out. Link in the. Doodly deep. Doodly. Box in the box. Some okay. kind of there. There will be a link to Danger Five on my face. <laughs> <laughs> on his face. <laughs> so what? What else did we notice? Uh, things. Other things that we. Uh, other things that we noticed uh, that we learned from the show. Uh, Pearl is still doing the maintenance on Greg's van. Pearl is still doing the maintenance um, on, on the van. on the refrigerator. There's a post-it note. Reminding Pearl to buy oil, mo buy motor oil. No, I'm not surprised by that, considering we have seen in a past episode before the Stephen bomb, Amethyst has oh. tried to <laughs> eat Eating all of the motor oil, apparently. <laughs> but, you know, unlike motor oil, um, we, we also saw that, again, thanks to Ronaldo, fish do pizza... Grade A health inspection. Ooh, so, right. If you're looking for somewhere so, to eat in Beach you, City. If you don't want to eat motor oil. <laughs> if you don't want to eat motor oil. And you're in Beach City. Uh, we don't know what the we don't know whether the big donut passed their health inspection. Or the Fryman. Or the Fryman. So if you're in Beach City and you're looking for a place to eat, uh, and you and one of your criteria is you want the place to be clean, fish stew pizza. And That's where you should go. You know, if they're ever low on salt, you can just visit the temple. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure temple. Pearl has ample. <laughs> oh, <man>. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right. All right, do you have anything for us? Um, well, we do know that Connie does magic stuff with Steven. That's true. And her and parents, parents don't know about it. Wait a minute. Um, is magic stuff a euphemism for something? Is we, this something that I should know about? Do you guys do it, magic stuff? It's on the magic may of stay. We don't talk about that in front of parents. Yeah. So is that a euphemism for uh, something? No, ignoring that, moving on. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I was just very happy to see that... Um, while they were doing magic stuff, uh, we got validation from Greg that Transcendental Space Rock is in fact a legitimate Transcendental music genre. And I've been telling you that one shelf for years. So um, look, I didn't believe you, but now now that it's in Steven Universe, I guess I have to acquiesce. So does that mean that the one percent really do freeze their pets? Hmm. Well, I don't, I'm not really sure about that. Well, okay, no, it was. In a documentary, it it was, it was in a documentary, so. A poorly edited documentary, but yeah, I don't know. Hey, we knew they back. froze their heads. I didn't know they froze their pets too. Heard it backwards in a Pink Floyd song somewhere. <laughs> and wasn't that documentary pretty fun to watch? But you know what else would be fun to watch? What would be fun to watch? Garnet doing stand-up comedy because it has been confirmed that she is a master. Of comedy. That is true. Garnet is a master of comedy, um, and you know the gems are really supportive of each other on that. I, I thought that Amethyst uh, rolling around on the ground that was pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, no, I th the the gems really do though. They really are very interconnected, and you know I think everyone's seen the whole 
Pearl Rose relationship, right. but right. Um, a lot of what gets overlooked is the interconnectionness and the dependency and sort of the relationship between the other gems, because Pearl and Garnet, Pearl and Amethyst, Garnet and Amethyst, all of them are all very connected together. Of they, course, they we know. They just all have a mo They do feel real emotional connections towards each other, be it family, friend, or Romantic. actually right. well, you know, the, romantic the, interest. The, the, the love story, the, the embodiment yeah. of love. You know, yeah. Garnet is the embodiment of love as well as being a master of comedy. Mm -hmm. um, and who, who, who was it that said that, what was it, Pearl? That he, Pearl is the embodiment of gayness, surprisingly, <laughs> considering she, we have. She, she, Pearl, Pearl has managed to be gayer than the literal personification of a gay okay, relationship. relationship. Um, but, you know, the, the relationship, the, the real emotions, the, you know, the family connections and stuff like that. But on Pearl, one of the things that I, I took away from this, and I don't know if I'm going out there or, or what, but I saw that Pearl was was really devoted to Rose, but I don't know that she's necessarily devoted to Rose's cause as much as she is devoted to Rose. Because you look at her, she's she's very physical, right? Mm -hmm. She's, there, there's, for somebody who's an intellectual, where her gym is, is intellectual, she, she does, there's a lot of physical connection, a lot of physicality between her and the other gyms. Um, and, uh, I think that's those those real emotions that they show there are are. I think that's one of the things that we really really love about this show that really makes us mm -hmm. sit down and watch it and really enjoy it. Yeah, no. But while we're talking about Rose's cause, let's switch over to Homeworld's cause because it seems like the Homeworld gems are researching something. They are. Uh, well, you know, my theory is my theory is that the. Uh, the gems can no longer reproduce, and that's part of this whole thing. It's the cause of the war, it's the kindergartens, it's all of that stuff. We don't know um, exactly what's going on, but those are yeah. those are my theories. I think they're, the home world, it, the research, the, the fusions, mm -hmm. um, the kindergarten, um, all of that stuff, I think that's all looking for, for a, a new means of reproduction. Mm -hmm. And we know that... Um, the original reason Peridot came back was to check on the clusters. Right. And that was before the Stephen Ball, and that was before the return, that was before all of that. Um, they all assumed that Peridot was there to reactivate the kindergarten, but right. we know that's not true. One of the ideas that we've actually tossed around, because surprisingly we do talk about this show on occasion in our free time, what? is um, I, I don't know the possibility so of... Not only that the uh, the clusters being a method of reproduction, but the Rose Stephen sort of half human half gem being a method of reproduction. At least that's that's one of the things that I'm thinking towards. Is it might not have it might not just have been we can't do this to the earth. It might have been there's another way that gems can survive. Right, and I do think that Stephen is a step in Rose's plan. Rose has some kind of plan. That's part of my thing. I think that she has she has an idea, and she has a way to correct whatever the problem is that led to the kindergartens and yeah. the, and these clusters and those kinds of things. And Stephen is a step on that plan. Yeah. Um, so I think as we go on, I think we'll find more and more. Um, out about that, and I'm really excited about finding out about that. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's, it's very interesting watching these things, and you know, as Greg says, these guys really are aliens, and so trying to predict what they're doing, trying to predict the motives and what their civilization is like, their society, and why they're doing the way things are. I'm really interested to see where the writers go. I'm really interested to see how this all is portrayed, because we know home world is light years beyond where it was before, mm -hmm. but we don't even know where it was before. They had intergalactic space travel. They have teleporting and right. stuff like that. So how much further advanced are you than that? Um, you know, another thing that... And um, if they're so advanced, why would they need to resort to methods like the kindergarten to, which destroys the Earth? They... <clears throat> That's a that's a group that's a good question. If you're if you have this if you have this technology, why do you have to why do you have to take 
uh, life from somewhere else to, to do that. And I think this comes down, we talked about, um, talked about the fundamentals of why you go to war, and one of them is morals and one of them is ideals. Mm -hmm. And so this idea that in order for us to reproduce, we must kill these, these people, the, the earthlings have to die so that we can live, um, and the fact that Rose apparently, in my theory, opposes this. Um, wow, that started out really silly and got to a really uh, serious place. Um, and I think that's a good place to end yeah. for today. You can um, cut it there. Yeah, I'm Yakko. I'm Wacko. And I'm cute. <laughs> Is it really... Nice. Is it really <laughs> paying tribute if we just copy them? Well, I, I know we kind of think. I, I think it's. I think it's. You can say it's homage. We're paying uh, homage to them. I, I'm not sure it's homage. It is homage. We're. No, we're I, I think it's pronounced homage. Right. <laughs> <laughs>